so expenditure cutting measures. Discretionary spending is to be further cut by an additional 10%. The Ministry of Finance is currently meeting with MDAs to review their spending plans for the rest of the three quarters to achieve the discretionary expenditure cuts. Two, these times call for very efficient use of energy resources. In line with this, there will be a 50% cut in fuel coupon allocations for all political appointees and heads of government institutions, including SOEs, effective 1st February 2022. With immediate effect, government has imposed a complete moratorium on the purchase of imported vehicles for the rest of the year. This will affect all new orders, especially four-wheel drives. We will ensure that the overall effect is to reduce total vehicle purchases by the public sector by at least 50% for the period. Again, with immediate effect, government has imposed a moratorium on all foreign travels except pre-approved critical statutory travels. Five, government will conclude on ongoing measures to eliminate ghost workers from the government payroll by end December 2022. Government will conclude the renegotiations of the energy sector IPP's capacity charges by end of quarter three 2022 to further reduce SS capacity payment by 20% to generate a total savings of 1.5 billion Ghana cities. We will impose a moratorium on establishment of new public sector institutions by end of April 2022. Prioritize ongoing public projects over new projects. This is to enhance the efficient use of limited public funds over the period by finishing ongoing or stalled but approved projects. Reduce expenditure on all meetings and conferences by 50% effective immediately. Pursue a comprehensive reprofiling strategies to reduce the interest expense burden on the fiscal and liaise with organized labor and employers association to implement with immediate effect the measures ca captured in the Kwao declaration of the 2022 national labor conference including reforms towards addressing salary inequities inequalities example article 71 office holders the weak link between pay to productivity and sustainability of the payroll. Let me say this. President Akufuado has absolutely no intention to roll back on any major policy like the free SHS. We see education as the best enabler for sustainable economic growth and transformation and social mobility and we'll do more to improve on it, um, for it to serve more and better our children. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition, and finally, government approved the ministers and the heads of SOEs to contribute to cut 30% of their salaries from April to December 2022 to the Consolidated Fund. We would like to thank the Council of State in their leadership in complementing the government policy on this. All of these measures, ladies and gentlemen, are aimed at ensuring that we achieve the 7.4 deficit target set in the 2022 budget. Fuel price mitigation measures. Ladies and gentlemen, the rising prices of fuel at the pumps is influenced largely by the rising crude oil price on the international market and the exchange rate depreciation. Though the rise in crude oil prices should have been to our benefit on net basis, Ghana's import of petroleum products amounts to 5.2 times the value of proceeds from its crude oil exports. In 2021, for example, we exported $3.947 billion of crude, of which Ghana's portion was $513 million dollars. However, we imported two billion seven hundred and nineteen dollars of crude and finished products. So the purported windfall gain in foreign exchange is quite a mirage. From January to date, the average export price of diesel and petrol have increased by fifty-seven percent and forty-five percent respectively. 
Unlike in other countries where the hike in crude oil prices and exchange rate volatility are leading to shortages in supply of petroleum pro products, government is implementing measures to guarantee constant supply of petroleum products. Mitigate the impact of the rising price of petroleum products at the pump. For the next three months, government has decided to reduce margins in petroleum price buildup by a total of 15 pesos per liter with effect from 1st April. The details are as follows. Bust margin reduced by 2 pesos per liter. Unified petroleum price and fund margin reduced by 9 pesos per liter, fuel marking margin reduced by 1 peso per liter, primary distribution margin reduced by 3 pesos per liter. Ladies and gentlemen, these reductions in margins are expected to reduce prices of petrol by 1.6% and diesel by 1.4%. We anticipate that the measures taken to strengthen the currency will help further stabilize the prices at the pump. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition, the NPA and the Ministry of Energy are in discussions with the OMCs to reduce their margins within the spirit of burden sharing. The government will do all it can to ensure consistent supply of fuel and manage the rate of export price increase by ensuring that the Bank of Ghana has access to adequate foreign exchange to support this. Revenue measures. Ladies and gentlemen, cutting down expenditures alone will not be enough. Our focus is therefore twofold, to control expenditure and to raise more revenue domestically. As such, we will therefore begin the implementation and collection of the revised property rate by end of April 2022 will implement the EVAT, e-commerce, and e-gaming initiatives by the end of April 2022. We will roll out a simplified tax filing mobile application for all eligible taxpayers by July 2022. We will impress upon Parliament to fast track the passage of the e-level bill, tax exemptions bill, and fees and charges bill. Prioritize the revenue assurance compliance an enforcement program, the race program, to plug revenue leakages, especially at the ports, the infamous fuel bunkering cartels, and small-scale mining exporters cabal. Government will partner the private sector to also introduce digital systems to monitor quarrying, sand winning, and salt winning to get more revenue from our natural resources. And immediately enforce the no duty, no exit policy at the MPS terminal at the Tema port to improve revenue collection. Ladies and gentlemen, Government of Ghana is to conclude external financing arrangement of up to $2 billion in the next two to six weeks in line with approved external financing for 2022 and for liability management and to manage the slide of the city. MOF, Minister of Finance, will also work with the Central Bank to review the foreign exchange retention policy in line of approved external financing for 2022 and for liability management. Additionally, the following measures will be implemented over the medium term. Win off public tertiary institutions from government payroll and provide them of a fixed amount block. grant instead. Pursue reforms to address structural challenges in public financial management, including procurement and commitment control, payroll management, and human resource management. It is too early, ladies and gentlemen, to say the COVID-19 pandemic is over, but it is good to acknowledge that Ghana has handled it excellently. We have emerged from its deadliest and most economically damaging phase, if the measures we have outlined our economic recovery program are executed as planned, the Ghanaian economy 
economy should return to pre-pandemic levels across most economic indicators by the end of the year. On the other major event driving the global economy, we recognize that the world is four weeks into this terrible war, and it is quite clear that both the occupation of Ukraine and the range of sanctions imposed on Russia will have profound effects both in the short and long term for global markets. The longer the conflict goes on, for the greater will be the disruption to the global economy. We shall continue to monitor the situation very closely and make further adjustments if and when needed. We may have no control of the trajectory of the conflict, but it only reminds us how necessary it is for Ghanaians to assert greater control over our own destiny. That we can do if we share in the sacrifices before us to strengthen our capacity for greater self-reliance even in this interdependent world. Government remains optimistic that our economy will grow even bigger this year. The challenge now is to marshal this economic growth before us in the right direction and ensure that it benefits Ghanaians across the board. Ladies and gentlemen, we are confident that these measures will address the immediate and short-term challenges confronting our nation. Government remains resolute and committed to entrenching the structural transformation of our economy in the long term. To this end, we are aggressively pursuing key interventions such as 1D1F, Ghana Cares, and the Youth Start programs to improve our ability to look at and produce more goods and optimize the opportunities AFCFTA offers us. It is important that as a country, we reduce our dependence on imports and increase local production. Public institutions are reminded of government's policy to buy locally produced goods. It is critical that Ghanaians reconsider their preference and consume more locally produced goods to support the economy and guarantee decent jobs for our people. Ladies and gentlemen, your government, the Akufuado administration, is determined to turn things around and has the skills, discipline, and compassion to do so. But to do so, we must not allow our fortunes to be misdirected by speculators and naysayers those who only thrive when we allow avoidable uncertainties to hold sway in the affairs of the nation. I pray that peace be within the walls of parliament and sobriety within its towers as we go back to parliament to introduce our revenue bills. Ladies and gentlemen, these measures outlined today will significantly improve the macro fiscal situation towards a restoration of confidence and safeguard the achievement of the 2022 budget deficit target of 7.4% of the GDP. These measures have been carefully designed to ensure that growth and spending on social protection are, however, not compromised. Ladies and gentlemen, these are truly challenging times globally. No country has been spared. Government therefore call on all Ghanaians to stand together. Together we shall surely overcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Ghana, we can do it together. This is not the first time an MPP government working together with the people of Ghana has succeeded in overcoming an economic challenge of this nature. We have demonstrated time and time again our ability to overcome with you. First in 2001, the PMPP government, led by former President Kufo, together with the people of Ghana, brought the country out of severe. Second, in 2017, the MPP government, led by President Nana Danko Kufuado, together with the people of Ghana, brought the country out of the economic doldrums in which we were at the end of 2016. The third time still under President Akufuad working together with the people of Ghana will not be an exception. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had the privilege of engaging in a number of town hall meetings from Kofuridua to Takrade to Tamale to Wa and Ho and resolve and the resolve of our people to burden share.
for a better life for all of us is palpable. In particular, they want everyone to pay taxes. They want government to be accessible. They want parliament to get on with its work. They want employment for our youth. They want agriculture and industry to thrive. They want government to cut its coat. They want us to tackle our debt problem and raise more revenue and to prosecute offenders. Ladies and gentlemen, our media review will reveal the successes of what we have done. This will ensure that the structural reforms are crystallized, reduce fiscal dominance during this period, and ensure fiscal and monetary policy coherence. Let me end by a quotation from Jeremiah. Let us seek, all of us, the peace and prosperity of our nation. Let's pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Together, we'll confront the macroeconomic challenges head on, stabilize the economy, and set it on the path of economic transformation for all. So yes, we'll bring in additional one to two billion dollars to stabilize the slide of the currency. We have enumerated uh, a number of issues to ensure expenditure cuts, and we have put in place um, strategies to ensure that we have the supply of fuel that is required and maintain and stabilize the, the increases. But let us also remember that this is a global phenomenon in which we are part of, but we can and we will overcome. God bless our whole land, Ghana. Thank you.